as Casey. Um, today I am going to talk to you about the CREVIT exam, um, which is the Comprehensive Receptive and Expressive Vocabulary Test. Um, the model that we have in um, our lab here is the original model. So I have the CREVIT from 1994 as well as the CREVIT for adults from 1997. Um, I do want to mention that there have been two updated editions since this. Um, the second edition was in 2006, and then the third edition, which we're currently using in practice, was published in 2013. Um, so there are a couple distinctions and updates that I'll mention, um, but right now just be aware that for the majority of this presentation, I'm referencing the original editions. Um, so the CREVIT is a norm-referenced uh, instrument that's designed to measure both receptive and expressive oral vocabulary skills. Um, the CREVIT the original is uh, intended for ages 4 to 17.11, whereas the adult is distinguished for 18.0 to 89.11. Um, in those newer editions, uh, they consolidate the two versions into one, and so the age range for the CREVIT 2 and CREVIT 3 just simply goes from 4.0 to 89.11. Um, so just keep mention of that, or keep note of that. So the CREVIT has a couple of purposes. Um, it serves to primarily identify individuals who are significantly below their peers in oral vocabulary proficiency. Um, it also uh, serves to determine any discrepancies that might exist between receptive and expressive vocabulary skills. Uh, and it also serves as a the way to document progress in oral vocabulary development, uh, essentially as a consequence of any intervention programs. So um, just, just a general introduction to the credit there. Also, I do find it important, there are four pretty distinct features about this um, assessment that the manual makes mention of. So one of them is that it measures both receptive and expressive oral vocabulary. Um, receptive may perhaps a little more so than the expressive, but you have subtest for each um, and then what happens is you get a raw score for each uh, and then you create a composite score and that all can be converted into standard scores. So you have general vocabulary for the composite, your receptive vocabulary and expressive vocabulary. Um, the scores for both subtests are based on the same normative sample. The pool of words for the subtests pertain to the same concept um, so that is Easy, it helps with transitions and certainly with administration. Uh, and then there's also, they use high quality color photographs, which we learned from that PPVD test that that definitely is a, is a benefit. Um, so I'll just show you. The test itself comes with a manual as well as this photo album. The photo album consists of 10 plates um, that have six pictures of them on each. Um, each plate has a specific theme, so this one here is animals, we also have transportation, occupations, clothing, food, personal grooming, tools, household appliances, recreation, and clerical materials. Um, the length of the test usually takes between 20 and 30 minutes, each subtest roughly 10 to 15 minutes, um, although there is no the individual is allowed to work at their own pace, so there's no specific time and limit imposed. It just generally moves fairly fast. Um, so now we're going to talk specifically about the receptive portion, which is where you will need your uh, book here. Let me pull out the form as well to show you. So you have a pretty nice form here. Um, one thing I'd like to point out that was really nice, um, I'll hold it up close. There is clear um, instruction right here on the form for you for both what you're supposed to say as well as um, what is considered a correct response. Um, so they really try to make it pretty basic for you as well as there's information about basal and ceiling right there for you as well. So that's very nice and easy to reference. On that note, there is no basal for the receptive vocabulary subtest and they consider a ceiling to be met when two consecutive incorrect uh, items per page um, are said. <laughs> okay, so um, when you look here at the first page, the examiner um, might say, put your finger on horse. 
for example. Um, so this starts pretty basic, and then there are some more um, kind of advanced words. Like, for example, we might see mare on this page, or even carnivorous. Which one is carnivorous? Um, so they're not all entirely straightforward. The other thing that I um, find interesting about this test is that unlike the PPVT, um, for each page there is a range of four to seven questions. So that means not every picture is specifically um, asked about or one picture might be asked about several times. Um, so that kind of distinguishes it, whereas PPVT is each page is one word. Um, so that's just one distinction there for you. Um, so pretty straightforward, like I said, put your finger on mare, put your finger on carnivorous. Um, and here, these are pretty straightforward, either correct, which gets a score of one, or incorrect with a score of two, or excuse me, zero, score of zero. Um, so here we have transportation, an example from this one might be, show me handlebars, um, show me aircraft, show me locomotive, uh, show me tracks. So there you can see the train picture was referenced two times, uh, but not all the other pictures were referenced. Um, the raw score is achieved or generated by just adding up the number of correct responses. Um, and then the, of course, the handy dandy manual um, provides tables in the back that you can equate or take your raw score and convert it to a standard score as well as um, percentile ranks. So here we have it broken up into the subtests. Here you can do the composite score of both subtests um, and then the percentile ranks. Now just to note too, the updated versions um, now include information about age equivalence as well as some more descriptive information. Um, so that's been updated on there. Um, in regards to the expressive portion of the test, you can see there's 61 items on the receptive. Expressive is a little smaller, it's only 25 items. Again, they're giving you some very clear and easy instruction right up top there for you. Um, so this is more of the define the word I say format. Um, for example, the first word I might say, um, what does toy mean? Um, and I don't know how well you can see, there is one point you can see if they suggest any of those words, that's given a point. And then there's a line that says query, in which case, if they give a more a vague response, you can say, tell me more about toy to elicit a, a more expansive response. Um, and to try and get that one point out of them, um, you're allowed to do that once. You can't continue prompting. So, but you, because it is a more dynamic, type of uh, assessment, you are allowed a little uh, flexibility in that area. And again, you have um, your one point scale for correct answers, zero points for incorrect answers. Raw score, score is generated by adding up all the correct responses and then um, use the manual to get the standard scores there for you. Um, I'll just read you the Expressive subtest is meant to encourage and require an individual to converse to the best of their ability uh, in detail about a particular stimulus word. So you're really trying to get like not just one word answers out of them, but a description. Um, the scoring of the test is uh, the standard scores are um, come from a mean of 100 with a standard deviation of 15. So that's pretty standard there. And again, you can score for receptive vocabulary expressive vocabulary or general vocabulary, which is the composite of the two. Um, the materials are pretty simple. You just need your test form and the book here. So that's nice. Um, some pros also are that it goes fairly quickly. Um, like I said, it can be administered pretty easily and in a pretty short period of time. So that's definitely uh, nice and something to consider. Um, I will just make a quick mention the reliability of the test was proven as well as the validity and the validity was discussed on construct and content validity um, and then the adult version also incorporated criterion related validity of which all were proven to be um, valid <laughs> and reliability as well. I won't go into detail on those, all that information. Is 
very accessible. Um, so just a couple basic pros and cons to give you. Um, the tests, like I said, were proven valid and re reliable. Um, they're quick and easy to administer. The scores for receptive and expressive vocabulary are based on the same normative sample. Um, as, and it, one thing that's nice is you can get an independent score for receptive or expressive, or you can get that general score as well. Um, the images are those color photographs, so those are nice and realistic. Um, so that expressive subtest does use a more fluid and dynamic um, scaling, scoring scale, which has been proven to be precise and popular measurement, measurement of expressive vocabulary. Um, the items from both subtests uh, relate to the same themes, which is nice for transition. And it is essentially appropriate across a wide range of ages. Some cons in this original edition is that uh, the control for bias was very minimal. They really just looked at gender uh, and white versus non-white um, ethnic groups, which is pretty basic. In the updated versions, they definitely address that a little more intensely, so that has been uh, attended to. Um, of course, it measures just the voc vocabulary, the lexical information from an individual. It doesn't get a more um, full picture of their language skills, so it's pretty specific. Um, so, and some other things, this one thing it doesn't provide is a pronunciation guide, which I do think would be very nice. As in song PPVT, some of those words were kind of confusing, and there's no guidance for that here. Um, so those are just a couple mentions of that. Um, now I'm going to play for you a video of me uh, giving this, or some examples of me giving this exam. Um, I skipped around a little bit just to elicit the appropriate responses. I definitely wanted to get some more questionable responses from the um, expressive portion of the test um, and just give you some solid model, modeling of the both subtests. So thank you so much. Hi, Brian. Hi, Casey. Um, today I want to see how many words you know. Some of the words I'm going to ask you will be easy and some of them will be hard. If you don't know what a word means, say, I don't know. Um, if you think that you know the word but you're not sure, go ahead and guess. It's okay to guess. Ready? Let's begin. Okay, look at all of these pictures. Put your finger on horse. Nicely done. Um, great. Now I'm going to say some more words. Be sure to look carefully at all of the pictures. Uh, you can point to the same picture more than once. Put your finger on lion. All right. Excellent. We're going to skip ahead to picture plate G here. All righty. Put your finger on drill. Very nice. Put your finger on hatchet. Put your finger on picture ascend. Beautiful. Uh, put your finger on claw. finger on ball. Put your finger on seat. Okay. Put your finger on tail. Nice job. Put your finger on shuffle. Excellent. Put your finger on bonnet. Put your finger on leather. Put your finger on stitches. Now we're going to look at some expressive vocabulary of yours. So I'm going to say some words. Uh, tell me what each word means to you. For example, if I said, what does baby mean? You might say, it's a newborn child, it's a young child, it's an infant, it cries a lot, it wears diapers, or it sleeps a lot. Now you do one. What does lemon mean? Uh, sour citrus fruit. Uh, tell me a little more about lemon. 
use it to garnish foods, you use it to add flavor to foods, and it's got an acidic, sour taste, and it's yellow. All right, thank you. Tell me about mandolin. A mandolin is kind of like a violin, like a small guitar. Okay. How about, um, tell me about curd. Uh, it's like a, um, that's how you make cheese, mm -hmm. like getting curd in the milk. Okay, great. Um, tell me about macaw. It's a tropical bird from places like Costa Rica. Okay. Um, tell me more about macaw. They're brightly colored, tropical bird. There's red or blue ones. They're pretty big. Okay, great. Tell me about Teamster. A Teamster is a member of an organized labor union. Um, tell me more about Teamster. I don't know. Okay, great. You did wonderful today. Thanks so much. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so just some last kind of remarks and things to touch on about the Crevit. Um, I mentioned that today I mostly discussed the original, the first edition, but I did want to just talk about the other editions um, really briefly because I think that they are some important things. The overall format of the test is pretty similar. You have a picture book um, that includes color pho photographs, um, and then a pool of words that for both subtests relate to familiar and everyday concepts. So the test itself didn't entirely change. Um, as an examiner, you, you might not see that many uh, administration differences, but in terms of their norms um, and reliability and valid validity, there are some uh, things to note. So in the Crevit 2, um, which, like I said, was published in 2006, um, their normative data was a, basically a collaboration of the norms from the Crevit and the Crevit A, from that first edition, uh, with the exception that they added 365 students. Um, so it wasn't, uh, whereas the Crevit 3 started and had an entirely new normative sample. Um, so that's something to note. Also, a uh, majority of this Crevit 2 norm group uh, were not actually tested on the Crevit 2. Rather, assumptions were made about how they might score on sections um, that they actually were never tested on. So that is interesting. Um, definitely, the biases were looked at in the Crevit 2. Um, they paid more attention to not just gender, and race, but some linguistic disability and ethnic biases that might be present in there, which is nice. The credit didn't really pay a lot of attention to much. Um, and then also in terms of reliability, they added coefficients for subgroups such as individuals with disabilities, African Americans, Hispanic Americans, and gender groups, as well as they looked um, for the entire normative sample. Um, like I mentioned earlier, the age range was extended to include adults, so it went from 4 to 89.11. Um, and those are the basic changes in um, the second edition. The third edition, um, like I said, has an entirely new normative data. Um, the sample ranged from 5 to 89.11 um, in age. The, the sample was proven demographically representative when compared to the 2011 uh, United States Census report, um, whereas before, you know, that normative sample wasn't necessarily congruent with the times. Um, the Crevit 3 incorporated the pronunciation guide that the original Crevit was missing. Um, and then also there is age equivalent data now included. Um, and then they updated the stimulus photograph. So I don't know exactly what those look like, but um, these are a little outdated, as you can see. So that seems like that would be nice. Um, their validity studies expanded and included tests that were geared towards looking at the test sensitivity and specific specificity qualities. Um, and also the composite score no longer has floor or ceiling effects. So those are the basic changes or differences or updates um, in those newer editions, just to be mindful of. So 
Thank you all. I hope you learned something. Okay, bye.